what's up everybody welcome back to exotic astrology again and today we will discuss on a very fundamental topic of astrology which is the difference between a zodiac sign and a planet all right if you are new to the channel then please subscribe to it and check out my other videos now let us begin by saying god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him what is the meaning of a zodiac sign and what is the meaning of a planet well zodiac sign is dead it has no physical existence as a person but planet has a physical existence as a person do you understand what is the meaning of a person person means just like you and me they also live they also dance they also smile they also cry they also have feelings they also undergo situations and all the planets represent different aspects within us and who is ultimately the person it is we ourselves because we are the ones on whom the planets are acting by being persons for example jupiter is the priest sun is the father moon is the mother venus is the spouse mercury represents relatives and friends saturn represents the servants the working class that's it and mars represents brothers now when i say that zodiac signs are not living what it means zodiac signs have their own importance without a planet for example the sign of sagittarius which is the sign of spirituality will always be there in a person's chart irrespective of any planet placed there okay but if you take the example of jupiter then jupiter has to sit in a particular sign to act accordingly for example jupiter in the sign of aries has a complete different meaning than it has in the sign of scorpio because it is a living entity it will give results as per the influences which it is having for example if jupiter is sitting with some other planet then the results will be altered if jupiter is sitting alone or is aspected by some other planet then the results will vary but for zodiac signs even if there is no planet in them they will still have the effects for example if you take a taurus ascendant taurus ascendant for taurus ascendant the second house has the sign of gemini okay which means the taurus ascendant people will always like to eat different kinds of food different varieties and they would like to travel and eat <laughs> because the sign of gemini is acting there so that will act irrespective of any planet being placed there or not irrespective of wherever mercury is irrespective of how mercury is placed that zodiac sign will affect the second house and their family people are also extremely talkative <laughs> because gemini represents people who talk too much for example capricorn ascendants for capricorn ascendants the seventh house will have a zodiac sign like every other house every other ascendant they have the sign of cancer in the seventh house which means for them for the marriage to function emotional security is the number one priority now that is true for every person for every lagna but for them that is the number one requirement do you understand now for example if suppose somebody is a libra ascendant then for libra ascendants the sign which falls in the fourth house is the sign of capricorn that means the fourth house of mother home property land business, uh, real estate hotels <laughs> hoarded assets hoarded wealth your security in life all these things will have the dynamics of capricorn because the sign of capricorn is placed there that means that is the field where the actions will be performed now planets situated there they will either modify or they will 
improve or they will degrade the quality depending on their relationship with the sign for example if there is a Aries ascendant for him fourth house has the sign cancer which means when it comes to home they need emotional security very much and if suppose Mars is placed there in the fourth house then this can cause difficulties because Mars gets debilitated in the sign of cancer but irrespective of the placement of Mars wherever Mars is placed the fourth house cancer dynamics will play for an Aries ascendant because that is the zodiac sign which is placed there for example if you are a Leo ascendant your, uh, your seventh house has the sign of Aquarius which means that for Leo ascendants the partner which they get can be from a different caste community creed because Aquarius is co-ruled by Rahu along with Saturn and they can be very eccentric they can be very unorthodox they may not abide by situations or traditions which are considered statutory in the society and this will be acting irrespective of the placement of Saturn or Rahu in the horoscope in whichever house for a Leo ascendant and that is why transits have a different result for example if your son for you for anybody suppose if you take the example of a Volvo ascendant so for Volvo ascendant if you are a Virgo ascendant now Sun is transiting in Virgo that means Sun is transiting over your first house that means when Sun is transiting Virgo Sun is transiting your not Mercury it is transiting the first house that means the first house signifies the body that means Sun will throw light on the body now which means you will become very conscious about your appearance etc that is different from being sun transiting over your natal mercury that is different for example if you are a capricorn ascendant and sun is transiting in your ninth house for example now sun is transiting in your ninth house if you are a capricorn ascendant then you may want to go towards religion you may want to go towards spirituality but when sun transits over mercury who is your ninth lord what happens then when sun transits over mercury you can meet a guru because the planet is living and for capricorn mercury is the ninth lord which means Ninth house is the house of spirituality, but ninth lord is the guru, ninth lord is the father. So suppose, for example, a Capricorn ascendant has Mercury in the tenth house in Libra, in his original birth chart. And now, next month, when Sun transits into Libra, which is their tenth house, what happens then? Now Sun is in the ninth house, so they may want to connect to spirituality. I am assuming there are no planets in the ninth house okay then they will be interested in learning Vedas learning scriptures all the traits of the ninth house they may also be interested in meeting someone spiritual as a person but that will not be the only trait but whenever Sun will transit the tenth house if you have mercury placed there because for Capricorn mercury rules the ninth house that means whenever for a Capricorn ascendant Sun in transit will go over your natal mercury it is a time when you will exclusively focus on connecting to your guru even if mercury is in the 8th house 6th house 5th house 4th house it doesn't matter do you understand for example Jupiter when Sun is transiting over Jupiter you might want to connect to your guru or suppose for a Libra ascendant Jupiter rules the third house and the sixth house now here suppose a person has Jupiter in the twelfth house for Libra ascendant I am saying if a person has Jupiter in the twelfth house in the sign of Virgo 
that means now till november uh, till october 15 sun is transiting in virgo that means now sun will be over his natal jupiter then that means what that he can want to meet a guru because guru is the natural significator of uh, guru guru is the person the teacher jupiter is the natural significator of gurus guides counselors teachers and if he's married he might want to focus on his children not fifth house on his children and for a libra ascendant jupiter rules the third house and the sixth house that means whenever a libra ascendant who has jupiter in virgo comes in this month 15 september to 15 october then apart from the natural significations of jupiter being sp spiritual guides or your children you will also have the tendency to focus on your younger brother or younger sibling because jupiter rules the third house now the third lord is a person and when sun is transiting over that sun is throwing light on the person and when sun transits the fifth house then you might naturally feel creative or you might want to focus on what children are doing in their life that will also have impact because like take the example of ninth house you cannot say that guru and ninth house guru and the teachings are different when i say different i mean that ninth house is spirituality but the guru is also part of the ninth house but what i meant to say there was when sun transits the ninth house you may not exclusively focus on the guru you may focus on reading scriptures or different aspects related to the ninth house you may want to connect to god you may want to uh, go to different holy places but when sun transits over jupiter or the ninth lord you will only want to connect to spirituality through your guru because now it is the lord lord is the person because lord is a planet there you understand the difference so this is the meaning of a planet and a zodiac sign when zodiac sign comes the activity comes regarding that house and the natural significations of that zodiac sign and when you talk of planets we mean living entities and depending on the placement of the planet things will vary for example if somebody has jupiter and venus combined in the chart in any house when sun transits over jupiter and venus you can feel the need to focus on your wife and your children simultaneously because jupiter venus represents those things but when sun transits the seventh house you may just focus on your marriage you may think oh is my marriage going good <laughs> which also means you will focus on the partner because you cannot focus on your marriage without focusing on your partner do you understand but when sun transits over your seventh lord or venus you will only focus on what the partner is doing is she doing some job how is her health how is she like this how is she like that you will not focus too much on your relationship you will also focus on that but that focus will be exclusive when your son transits the seventh house so that is the difference between lords and zodiac signs zodiac signs represent a field of action and planets represent living entities so by which you can distinguish and discriminate how you have to know because planets are tangible objects and they interact with you so for example a planet is made of the zodiac signs that it controls for example jupiter represents spirituality and wisdom higher expansion growth etc why because it is jupiter no because it rules sagittarius and pisces now the traits of sagittarius and pisces is fully present in jupiter because jupiter is the person who carries those signs planet is the carrier of the zodiac sign therefore if sagittarius and pisces is falling in any house in somebody's horoscope but if jupiter is placed in the fourth house 
the traits of Sagittarius and Pisces will also be present there in that house. Do you understand? That means it is possible that the person has a very clean heart and his, he has a very good direction in life because fourth house is the house of heart, your direction. His home can be very peaceful. His home can be very divine. People in his home can be very good unless Jupiter is very badly afflicted or spoiled by sitting in signs like Capricorn unless that happens in, in a rare case. But in general, the traits of Sagittarius and Pisces will be present in the fourth house because Jupiter is the one who is carrying the traits of Sagittarius and Pisces. That is it from my side. If you have any questions, queries or comments, then let me know below in the comment section or else like this video and subscribe to it. Until next time, bye-bye. See you.